Greetings and salutations, travelers. Welcome back to the Inn of Planar Crossroads, and as always, welcome back to our Around the Hearth discussions. This time, we are in the final chat of March of the Mechs, and we are discussing making mystical mecha. And specifically, we're talking about, uh, we're going to be working off the idea of a specific inspiration from media. This time, it is Drops of Jupiter by Train. So that's the idea that we're going to be pulling from, the source of media we're pulling from to make this mecha or this specific mech or this specific character, either way. And as you can see, it's just me and Scrat this time. And that is because those East Coasters had to go to go to bed for some reason. It's not like it's an hour ahead of us or something like that. Psh. I tell you. Anyway. We're going to dive into that, but first we'll do the attendees like we normally do, and then we'll do our shout-out and our key points and recommendations. So there we go. So let's go ahead, and I'll go first to spare Scrat. Scrat has... Uh, I'm, I'm not really not really sparing him much, because he's gone after me every single time this month. So... It works out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I am Adam L. Spain with the Interplanar Crossroads, and you can check us out at the IOPC.com if you would like. We have that as our landing page that you can check and look at. It is for the social medias, the links to our different support options, all that type of stuff. So if you want to help support the content that we make here, check that out. Um, we got a Patreon, Subscribestar, a Locals, and you can contact us directly and support us through PayPal. So all of those options are there. That's me this month. I don't have a lot of changes or differences this time. So, aside from the visual ones that you're seeing, so let me know how you like those. But uh, that's March for us. The other thing I have is the Gentle Voice TV. That's on a ministry channel if you have an interest in understanding ministry type of stuff. Uh, we are trying to trying to put out two videos a month. We're, see, we're going to see if we can do that. You can let me know if we've done that in February and March, because this is coming out in the end of March. So you can let me know in the comment section below. But that's me. So I'm going to... This is the last chat, so I'm going to X out that, X out that. Uh, we did have Avenue Studios with us earlier, but you can check them out if you want to. They're over there now. But now, it's Scrat's turn. Me! I am Scrat from A Squirrel Plays, and I am simple. I am on YouTube, 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 and only YouTube. And over there, I make videos, obviously, being YouTube, and I talk about the mechanics of storytelling, such as making characters and world building, but I also like to dive in more often into TTRPGs, but kind of from that writing standpoint, so I talk about storytelling and making characters for that as well, but then I also like to get into the mechanics as I explore and discover new TTRPGs to play. So like what makes them tick, how they function, that good kind of thing. And also like to try in our little Discord group, get other people to come together and share the things they've been working on, whether that's their own game systems or their own stories they've been working on, characters for either writing or TTRPG goodness, that kind of thing. And yeah, that's what the squirrel does. All right. So that's a squirrel place. Those are the only two attendees this time. All Like I said, all those East Coasters had to go to bed. So we're still going to do our shout out, though. And our shout out this time was one of our attendees in the first two chats, DM Tales. So you can check him out over here on YouTube if you would like. It is definitely something that I would suggest, especially since he's at about 2.5k right now. We're trying to get him up to 5k. Uh, not 5k. Well, I mean, we can get him up to 5k. We're trying to get him up to 3k. So we can get him up to 5k, maybe. Uh, aim big, right? We've been aiming big in our um, mecha march. So, march of the mix for that. 
He is having, the reason he's getting our shout out this time is because in April, April 12th through the 14th at the Central Baptist Church, there's Ecclesacon in Palmyra, New Jersey. So you can check that out. That is going to be ran by DM Tales, and you can pop in there. Avenue Studios will be over there, who was with us in our three chats before this one. And you can check all of that scheduling stuff out on their website, which is Ecclesacon.com. So there you go. Okay. That's our attendees and our shout-out. So, any more announcements before we dive into this, Scrat? I don't have any. All right. Well, then we encourage you, viewers and travelers, to come in, rest yourselves by the fire, join us around the hearth with your preferred beverage as we discuss making magical mecca. Skull. Okay. So, a few inspirational media bits that we have. Oh, that's a sci-fi one. Sci-fi squirrel. All right. So a few pieces of media that we've been mentioning is the vision of Escaflona. If you want to see big knight mech suits fight each other, since it is fantastical in its uh, presentation of magical mechs. There's Code Geass for more psychic type of sprinklings in a mainly mecha-based game. There's Aura Battler Dunbine for a, an older anime, 1983 for this one, where guys, a race car driver, transported into the f different space time to pilot magical mechs in a magical setting. So, Magic Knight Ray Earth, which the second season has more mecha in it than the first, so you can check that out for truly, really magic y mechs. Mashin Hiro Wataru for the more family friendly type of mechs. And Outlaw Star for really doing a good job of mixing the mystical, magical, spiritual, Tao, Tao type of magic into the technology that is present in that show. So. That's really good. Slight asterisk on the fan service, but other than that, it's pretty good. Then, Scrat did bring up G Gundam, you know, G G Fighter Gundam. So you can check that out for a, definitely a more fun style and theming, but still cool mecha. So they they did have excellent mecha designs in some of them. So there you and go. Terrible acting. <laughs> yeah, I mean. At, at at some point, it gets to the to the level where it's like it's bad. That it's so bad, it's good. Yeah. So that one, I saw something on that one. The people doing the voiceovers didn't even know what the scenes were. They just gave them the lines and like, yeah, read this. So they had no idea what the tone was supposed to. Be. <laughs> well, I mean, for not knowing the tone, they <laughs> did an okay job. So. There you go, I guess. But check that one out for just some fun mecha zaniness. I mean, the space colony for Mexico is a sombrero. <laughs> so I still can't get over that. That's still funny. It's it just how it is. So, all right. That is our media recommendations. For system recommendations, we've got Open Legend and Sagas for a more open and looser systems. Uh, open Legend is really good because you can take the extraordinary stuff and relegate that to only being for the mechs. And then the other stuff, the non-extra uh, stuff, can be had by humans. So there's that. If you want to use one system for for both the mechs and the non-mechs. So, and then Sagas, if you want to split systems, is really good for just handling the stuff that you're not wanting, to, that you're more wanting to to narrate and have be more narrative. 
Numenera was suggested as a system by Web D, uh, by DM Tales. So if you want to check that out, you can. It is going to have a bit more crunch to it than even Open Legend would, but that's fine for what you're trying to do if you're trying to tell that type of a story with it. Um, Battletech is particularly crunchy, and it is not very fantasy at all. So you can you can use it and have it in your back pocket if you want to have mech-specific things to draw on or just use. If you're wanting a bit of a balance, you can do Lancer, which already mixes in a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of pseudo-scientific stuff with the actual mechy stuff and the game. So that is an option. Apocalypse Frame that runs on the Lumen engine, the Lumen game engine. You can use it as one that was supposed to have some pretty good reviews on it. There's the Mecha Hack for those that like the black hack of a tabletop game. So that's an option. And then getting into the more directly themed things, there's Beam Saber for that anim really harnessing in that anime style of battling and fights and stuff along that line. And one that we've... Everybody that was chatting earlier kind of warmed it up to is Maharlika. It is a Filipino fantasy mythology type of mechanized weapons and warriors and mechs. So uh, it ha it mixes in spirituality with that. So you can check that out for that. That's really going to give you an, a different flavor of mechs and mech battling if you want to check it out. Pretty good stuff, I would think. Then there is also Armor Aster for those Armor Aster Advent. For those wanting a Powered by the Apocalypse game engine, which is a pretty open game engine in a lot of senses, you can run this with it. It's specifically designed to work with it. And they have, let me see, there's the, uh, it says Arcanist, and what's that other one? Arcanist and Imposter. And I think if I was listening to one of the, one of them correctly, the Arcanist is you know, that's magic in your mech. These are definitely magic mechs. They make no bones about it. But the are, the imposter is like somebody that can slap a mech upside the head type of thing. So, it's anime inspired. You can do that. <clears throat> then, Iron Edda Accelerated, which is an interesting one to me. You get to... Uh, Go full on fantasy and not even mess with mechs and pilot Jotun skeletons and stuff like that. So that's pretty metal. I think that's pretty cool. So that might be one to look into if you want that. Long dead giants. So you could, you could throw a tricube on that list too. I didn't bring it up in the other ones, but tricube tales, it's um like sagas in the sense you know it's like hey here's a set of rules use it for whatever you want but he has numerous what he calls one page settings that give you a list of objectives and you know a, a setting right but mm -hmm. um a lot of them will add on an extra layer or two in the mechanics and he has one for mechs oh. and then he also has one for the pilots. It's two totally different things, but he says on the mech one, he's like, hey, if your pilot ever leaves his mech, go use this other one page setting. So it's like interstellar mechs and the other one's interstellar troopers or something like that. Oh. So, Tricube tables or tables. There I go again. Tricube tales is um very simple. It's just three D six. It's really straightforward, easy to pick up, pretty fun stuff. There you go. And there's even a video on Scratch Channel about him playing in a Fallout setting. Legally distinct, of course. Yeah, of course. Legally distinct for that sake. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on there. And he played it, you played it as a solo RPG. So. That one, yeah. I used his solo rules, and then I combined that particular one, I combined with Nuts, the one I'm working on. So. Oh. 
There you go. All right. So those are our systems that we suggested. Now it's time to get back to Drops of Jupiter, which is indeed the song from 2001, which we were, I was a little bit surprised that it was not closer to the current day in the sense of 2003 or four, but it's 2001. Uh, we discussed last time that this one is we threw out a lot of ideas last time, so we're probably going to build on some of those. If you want to check them out, you can go back to our previous chat so that you can have that. Dan was right here for that one. And we talked about mission, a mission idea based upon this particular song. And we took pieces of the song out that we liked. Um, I'll probably go first, so Scrat can think about a character idea, which is the which is what we're doing for this one. Either a mecha or a character or both. If you, they are sharing maybe a sheet or something or a controller, a player. So with this one, I want to build on my plain old Jane guy type of thing. So in the song it says, now that she's back in the atmosphere, I'm afraid that she'll think of me think of me as plain old jane told a story about a man who was too afraid to fly so he never did land now i think this would be interesting if you had this be the inspiration not for the person not for the MacGuffin. so in the in my mission idea the drops of jupiter in her hair was this this female this person being born or coming back to this solar system of ours to Jupiter or somewhere around there, maybe somewhere in our solar system that they appear maybe in a shooting star type of setup to go along with the song after traveling across the Milky Way on her soul vacation. But she's not the character I want to build. She's uh, not helpless, but she's that defense mechanism for her is very taxing. So she wouldn't be someone you would play is how I would do that. Instead, you're going to have this almost in every man. He's got some skills because you have to, to be out in space and, you know, live. But I was thinking maybe space trucker or something along that line and using that along with the the idea that this person is going to be the person that finds her and gets her where she needs to go, which someone who knows the space routes, the safe space routes, would be the thing to do. <clears throat> I think also you can pull in the deep fried chicken part. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, as that might be... I think that would be fun if you did that as something that maybe this is something that he knows how to make. This is one of those things. This is an interpersonal relationship builder where maybe in the story, perhaps you've set your missions up or the things that you're trying to accomplish up to where this character, this every guy, everyday guy, one of the things that he can do, one of the things that he does well is make this for his crew. And it's almost like a bonding experience in that. He's um, perhaps the dad of the crew. If you know Cowboy Bebop, Jet is not just the captain, he's the cook. He, like, he, he cooks the food because the others don't cook. And it, he's... I'm not saying he's good at it, but... It presents a bonding thing at the end of an episode or something like that. So at the end of a mission, they all sit down and he just comes out. And it's almost therapeutic for him. He just comes out after this self-therapy of deep fried chicken and sets it down after making it. And it sits. And then you have this role play opportunity. And with this character to be able to build that out. And I think that would be cool. Since this is an everyman, you can make your mechs 
converted construction mechs, which would be neat, yeah, at least in my opinion. Uh, a converted loader or unloader for this particular character. So that's my idea for a character, working those things in, working in these different thought patterns and stuff like that, or at least inspirations, I should say, for these particular this particular everyman. So that's my dude. What you got, Scrat? Well, it wasn't a character so much um, like a player would have in their mech, but I got really building off the setting and concept I had in the last episode. I was getting really hung up on this part. Uh, did you sail across the sun, make it across the Milky Way, all the lights are faded, blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking... So, you know, that's the funky stuff that was at Jupiter that they picked up. Just that, mm. the, the goop, we'll call it the evil magic. And they <laughs> took it back by accident, like they didn't actually pick it up. It just kind of went with them. Um, I was wondering, it's like, what if you had another entity there of some sort that's kind of on par with that magic they accidentally brought home that was keeping it in check? kind of the balance to it um also something that is alive you know has some kind of mind of its own and uh something this is what i couldn't figure out something drew it away and that's what the balance went kaput something drew it away and like it it sought the maybe it just thought grass was greener on the other side somewhere and it, it, it left and that's when the whole you know, you got over there, heaven was overrated, all the lights were faded, that part. And then it, it comes back, it returns, and realizes, oops, you know, uh, this, the thing has, has left and it's gone to another planet. And then she, when she gets back to, um, well, not back, when she goes to see where the bad magic went, the that would be some magic that the mechs could consume and give them a boost. Not quite Ooh. Super Saiyan, but like, it would... At that point, if this was a campaign you were playing, I feel like at that point uh, the players slash good guys would be losing the fight. Even though they had their newfound mechs, like, they still weren't making that push forward. And they were kind of getting over... They were finding more of the story, and they would feel like they're making a push forward, but you know, they're getting... They'd kind of be in the same boats that the people were before them when they realized, yep, we're just not going to win this. But then that's when that other entity shows up and, nope, we're going we're gonna to correct this. Yeah, that, that could act as the impetus for the, the heroes of this campaign to, to be able to do that, the PCs. Mm -hmm. and so, that might, like somehow solidify the connection between them and the souls and the mech. I don't know how you would do that mechanically or like if it's I don't know, that's like a full on brainstorm session right there. <laughs> well you could do that and you could do it would also allow you as the GM along with however you're running this, maybe the GM is is role playing the mech spirit, but the soul inside the mech, the ghost in the machine. But the player is able to control those things and has buffs or debuffs based upon how they roleplay with that soul in the machine. And this new entity coming in can offer perspective, perhaps, to the one that we were talking about being a betrayer. The betrayer soul inside the mech and maybe drop a few hints. That's the way you can do it if you're the GM that's playing there. that. Um, your hints would have to be much more vague if a player is playing the mech spirit. So, that's just something to think about. Because oh. you, you don't want to mess with the player's autonomy who is playing the mech spirit. Right. So... But I think that's a good I, that's a good spot to build off of. You could do like this uh, if that was the balance, and that one left, then she 
and uh, so it's coming around in the story at least how it's coming out the way it's being said is that it's connected female entities of some kind or mm-hmm. so you have one that's the drops of Jupiter which is the negative or the drop you could switch it around where that's just the name the humans have given it and yeah that's not really anything about it so there's this entity from that prison of Jupiter and there's this entity that was this she her, maybe her home was the sun that might be where that sun comes in or one of these other locations like Venus if you want to not do the full on sun but do uh, another location maybe she went into a hibernation a soul vacation where her mind left but her body stayed there it would be it would be interesting to try and play that around cuz if you're staying on earth then you can't go to venus to do anything right or the moon but if you aren't staying on earth even if it's just through portals of some kind then maybe you could do that. Oh, I'm so sad we didn't get to run our mech game last week because it was going to be <laughs> whichever was the simpler of the two. We were looking at two of them. It was the, the Apocalypse Frame and Lancer. So whichever one was the easier one the one we were going to do. Oh, I, I think remember which one's which. Uh, let me see. Apocalypse Frame is... I don't know. I've never played that one. So I couldn't it, tell you. It looked like one of them was just D6s. Like, that's all you did. It wasn't too in-depth, it didn't look like. Right. I think Lancer uses more dice than just the D6. So it was probably uh, Apocalypse Frame. That's what I'm thinking, anyway. Me too. But now you have a bunch of ideas, see? I'll say he, somebody else was going to run it for once. I wasn't going to have to GM, so. Oh, you just you just make them watch this and you'd be like, now don't you want to play? Yeah. I think we're doing the track cube one tomorrow, so. Oh. Okay. Here's hoping. There you go. All right. One thing I did want to bring up again from, I thought about it while I was looking at it. Uh. For the character I was talking about, that's the plain Jane guy who is becoming a hero out of necessity, we'll say. The part where it says, who was too afraid to fly so he never did land, you could do that with backstory and incorporate that with him. He's a spacer, so he's someone who's born in space and has lived in space his whole life. And he's just, he's too afraid to fly, so he never did that. He doesn't want to go down to Earth. He doesn't, or, you know, a a terrestrial planet. He just wants to be in space. And there's a little bit of a tinge of fear about it, maybe. Or maybe he had a bad experience as a young child. You You could run that in there as a flaw or something, where he does not want to go in the atmosphere. He just wants to stay in space. And that could be something they maybe overcome as a character or something along that line. Um, For the dichotomy on yours, it up in the first portion, it says she acts like summer and walks like rain, reminds me there's a time to change and so on and so forth. Since the return from her stay on the moon. So there might be your protective force her stay on the moon to be able to allow you to play that up. And it does offer personality here for summer. So the moon reflects the light of the sun. Maybe there's that di- that storage of power that the di- that was then relayed and is, as a protection for... I'm thinking in a Magitech way. She mm-hmm. acted as a protection for 
from the influences of Jupiter in that sense and those those influences that would come down. But if she she left for some reason, if she tried to sail across the sun, did, did, did she make it to the Milky Way to see the lights are faded and that heaven's overrated? All that exploring she was doing was overrated. Hmm. Don't know. That would be something to discover further in, I would think. As you're making the game and have no idea where it's going. <laughs> Fair enough. Okie dokie. So, I suppose we are pretty close to time. And we may as well not just do final thoughts for this, but final thoughts for all of Mech. Uh, March of the Mechs. So, um, let me see. I will go first so Scrat can think about what final thoughts he might have for all of March of the Mechs. But I would like to say that as far as mine, kind of still keep in mind the things we mentioned before about scale, power source, stuff like that, as far as the crunchier bits. But when it comes to making characters and their stories, you can be a lot looser and the system can accommodate that. Even crunchy systems can accommodate storytelling in a way that is not always crunchy. Um, I think we brought this up in our Feb, uh, fantastical February this year. It's the, There's a difference between a crunchy system and a crunchy world setting. So, And uh, Dan also brought this up earlier in the chats, I think, <clears throat> this month. That they don't have, you can have a soft world setting with a crunchy system or a crunchy uh, world with a soft system behind it. Uh, and bearing that in mind, it is okay to choose what fits best for your story. So don't be afraid as the GM or as a player to talk with your GM and say, guys, I'm really wanting to to have this kind of story happen and then pick afterward what type of system you want to use because there's plenty of systems now even there are rules light systems or heavier systems and <coughs> because of the way they're designed now there's a lot of kinks worked out so they're not as hard to pick up as they used to be uh, and they're not uh, even crunchy ones can have guides for them, especially crunchy ones end up getting guides because people want to know. So don't be afraid to pick a crunchy system and don't be afraid to mix systems also. So that's, that's kind of my final set of thoughts for everybody. Any final thoughts, Scrat? Uh, mechs are cool, man. Um, I'm... I sound like I almost sound like I'm tooting my own horn here, but I really like the idea of the mech being a personality or like almost a whole other person <laughs> that that player has to work with. Because from a writing standpoint, you that that offers a lot when you shove two people together like that and they're stuck with each other. But uh, that's for the writing world. I don't feel like that would work as well as I want it to at the table but it might hmm. be worth experimenting I would like to see how it would work out if let's say you had three players right three each player made a pilot and then their their suit was controlled by another player well maybe not controlled but they were the the personality and the soul of it right but that's only if you're if you're doing that story slash Setting. Now, if they're just mixed, you know, that's just another fun layer of way to express yourself. You can, if you're the big brutish type, you can have a, a big broody mech, right? Yeah. Big burly mech. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like you were saying, there's, there's plenty to choose from out there. We were trying to figure out just a minute ago which one we were going to use last week. Um, multiple mech systems, multiple systems in general, multiple systems that 
encompass multiple settings. Very true. Yeah, you might almost be getting to be too many. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are plenty of systems now. And, yeah. um, which is why it's fine with so many rules light systems. It's why I don't hesitate as much to suggest the idea of having a looser system for the interpersonal relationships and just having that undergird a harder system for mech stuff, if you want that. Um, and you can have it where you can have a fantasy mech type of situation where you've got that intelligence in there. You would do it with an AI if you were doing it in a, a more sci-fi type of setting. But this fantasy type of Magitech, um, I don't think it would be terrible to... Let's say you have those three characters like you were talking about. Um, they can either choose the one to have a mech, one to be the mech and one to be the pilot, or... And then another person, that, that odd number is going to be tricky unless you're counting. I assume you're not counting the GM as a player in that scenario. Right, 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 right. Okay. So with those three, you can have it where they make three characters and then they each randomly decide who also runs their other mech personality. So you would still have people running two characters, but they would be running mm -hmm. someone else's. So that's a way to do it. You can also have it where, uh, depending on how you're working your mech and your setting, Magitech mechs can still have that hierarchical military setting. So you may have two player, a player running the mech, a player running the, the pilot, and then a player running either the mechanic or... Um, you could do a multi uh, a uh, transport captain or something like that, or a military captain also, if you want to do that, to where they run the stuff behind the scenes and offer support and battlefield control for the mech when it's fighting. So you have everybody still involved with them with the combat, and everybody is still doing things while that combat is happening so nobody feels left out uh, so there's a few ways you can do it even with odd players odd number players yeah I also add on to, to like what you were saying there at the beginning about figuring out your setting um, you know then then picking a system like I would, I would go on to say, f figure out your setting, then figure out how you want to play. Like, you, you know, Session Zero stuff, right? Do, do you want lots of roleplay? Do you want lots of mechanical stuff? You know, want a lot of leeway? And then, and then try to find a system that works for that. Cause, and I say that because even in my short time in the TTRPG scene, I've seen so many people try to cling to a system and make mm -hmm. things work with it and and i can kind of get that because like 5e is for me anyway that was a really big I've been playing for years and they're like you know i still got i can i understand the for the lack of desire to go pick up something new but there's so many simple rules light things out there that work so well and let you do what you want to do with just a few basic rules so like you know, if, if mech is the way you want to go go find a rules light thing that is made for mechs because odds are it's probably out there and drive through TTRPG has a lot for either free or pretty much close to it you know like a dollar or something mm -hmm. so instead of making like well how would you word that instead of making the game fit the fit the rules make the rules fit the game or is that yeah. backwards well, well you would you would say instead of choosing a a game to fit the rules you would choose a, the rules to fit the game 
Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Because so, there are. There are a lot of little rules light systems. And you can... It's not as hard as people think to make up or to hack your own system the way you like it. That is also true. You might also find that that's more fun. <laughs> so, there you go. Because you're going to homebrew anyway. Yep. So, that's, you may as well get the real name of the game. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody homebrews. Doesn't matter what they say, everybody homebrews. Even in official play, you have jurisprudence. You have the the GM still gets to say what happens at the table to a, to a large degree. So, don't be afraid to just say what's going to happen you know, at the table. It's your game. Here's your comment for the video. Everybody home. Everybody homebrews. There you go. I got one comment in this this <laughs> month. Scrat got all the others. So everybody homebrews. All right then. I think that's a good amount of final thoughts. So we hope you have enjoyed. Do check out a squirrel plays on YouTube as well as the In a Planner Crossroads. And the Gentle Voice TV. We hope you have had a... We hope this has been interesting for you. And that you have enjoyed it. And we do encourage you to have a great day. God bless and enjoy. Bye. Bye. This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you. Okay, Scrat, time to get the last one done. Oh, no. <laughs> you did fine, see? You'll be able to make up a character for this one. You already kind of did. See? I did. <laughs> yeah. You you started working on the uh, Drops of Jupiter thing, and we, we started going with, well, there's a her, right? So you could either run with that idea, or you can run with other stuff. Try and, in, try and further incorporate your KFC. Mm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ready to start this one? Yeah, let's do it. Okay.